7.1, I'm going to do rope tension question, and then I'm going to do some velocity questions from 7.2. So the first one, a chandelier is hanging from a ceiling. It has a mass of five kilograms. One of the wires makes an angle of six degrees with the ceiling, the other 45 degrees to the ceiling. Find the tensions in the wires. So draw yourself a little picture first of all. Pictures worth a million words, right? So here's my ceiling, here's one of the ropes, and here's the other one over here, 45 degrees. And I want you, first of all, to draw a force diagram. So what I want you to do is say, let's figure out what the downward force is here that's keeping this, or the upward force that's keeping it in equilibrium. So there's an equal and opposite force happening here. And it says that the mass is five kilograms. So that means that there's a force going this way that's balanced out by the tension in these two wires. And if it wasn't balanced out, the ceiling, um, the chandelier would fall. So this is my, my weak attempt at drawing you a chandelier. And I know that it is five kilograms. Now remember what I said um, in the last lesson that you can't leave this in kilograms. It has to be in newtons. So in this case, they didn't give you Newton, so it's your job to multiply this by 9.8 to get the Newtons, and that comes out to 49 Newtons. So now I'm going to draw um, a downward force. So this is my, my weight of my chandelier, and it's for 49 Newtons. So these other two vectors so there's one here that's going from here up at four, 60 degrees and another one over here at 45 degrees so i'm going to put them in some some color for you so we can match them up on the force diagram so let's make this one purple if it works i need a new purple pen really badly mm -hmm. maybe we won't make it purple here I have a second second try here. Oh, this one's a little bit better. Okay, so that's going to come from here, and I'm going to go up, and that's going to be that vector, and I have another vector here that I'll just do in red ink because ink always works. And that's this one going up this way, and it's going to join onto this one that I'm now going to make just a little bit longer. Okay, so you can see that we have two forces this one and this one. They're both going up and up and these two add to give me this downward 49 newtons. Okay, so we've got that figured out. Don't forget that this has to be in newtons. And then the second thing, what we just did was we put the two vectors that we're using to combine to make this 49. So let's call this purple one tension one. So here's my T1. And this one's going to be to T2. And you're getting them right off your diagram. Okay, so T1, T2, T1, T2 makes the 49. Add on the two tension wires. Okay, so we did that. Now we need to find the angles. Find the angles in our diagram. Okay, because we can't do anything without an angle. So we know this is 49 Newtons. And this one here, what we're going to do is we're going to draw in the ceiling. Okay, so let's say this is the ceiling here. We'll call the ceiling green. So I'm going to put the ceiling right here. Because when you see that, you can see that this angle here is going to go right in here. All right, so here's my ceiling. Let's call this a ceiling here. And that means this is 60 degrees right here, from here to here. Okay, the other place I'm going to draw a ceiling is just like take a look at this part of the diagram here. So you see how we have the ceiling and this 45... <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Enough. Yes. Okay, so up here, we can draw the ceiling again. Why not? Vectors are vectors. They can be moved, and we're moving this one over because we're looking at this angle here. 
So that's this angle here. Okay, so pretend you didn't even have this one here. And I drew this tension here. See, so there's my vector, there's my ceiling. The other one below, there's my vector, there's my ceiling. So this is nice because ceilings are parallel, hopefully. And that means if this is 45, this is also 45 degrees. Easy, right? This has to be 90. You can do it any way you want. That means this is going to be 90 degrees here. It's going to be 90 degrees on this side. This is also going to be 45 degrees in here. And what would this angle be here? If this is 60, 90, this is going to be 30. And there you've labeled all of the important angles for you to solve this question. So we found the angles. Now we want the sum of the two angles. Find the sum. That's this one here. Okay, when I say find the sum, I want to find these two. So I want 45 degrees plus 60, and that's going to give me 105 degrees. So we can make, well, I guess this diagram is good enough to work from here now. So we have, all we need to do now is to use the sine law, right? So we're, we found the angles, we found the sum, and now we just use sine law. How easy is that? So that means that the sine of 105 degrees, sine of 105 over 49 newtons. So we have to use this force. So that's why you had to find this sum, right? So that's um, the sine of 45 degrees over T1. Now don't say T2 because this is like this is sine law, right? So I want this side, that angle, this angle with this side, first of all. So sine 45 over T1. Remember that little X pattern? You did that in grade 10. Okay, so that means T1 is going to be the sine of 45 degrees times 49 divided by the sine of 105 degrees. And that should get you approximately 35.87 newtons. Okay, so that was pretty easy, wasn't it? So we found tension in the first rope, and now you're going to find the tension in the second rope, and you're going to do that just using the same formula here again, only you're going to use T2 and 30 degrees. So 30 and T2, like this, right? There's my other part of my X, my big X. So the sign... Keep with the one that you know for sure. Sine 105 over 49 is going to be the sine of, um, what do we say, 30? Sine of 30 degrees over T2. So T2 is going to be sine 30 times 49 divided by sine of 105. And bingo, you get your answer about 25.36 newtons. So then you would make a nice concluding statement. Therefore, the tension in the rope that makes an angle of 60 degrees is 35.87 newtons, and the tension in the rope making an angle of 45 degrees with the ceiling is 25.36 newtons. Okay, so, oh, was that off the page? Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm going to leave it there just for a second for you to catch up. So again, all we had to do was draw the diagram, make a force diagram, and add in the, um, the vectors that add up to this resultant of 49 newtons. Make sure we put all the angles in. Look at it in terms of writing the two ceilings in here. That helps you to find the angle, like the vector with the angle, the vector with its angle and the ceiling. Add these two together. And then all you have to do is use the sine law to um, find the tensions, just like that. Okay, so let's take a look at velocity question here. And this is an airplane question. The velocity of an airplane is its airspeed. The velocity of the wind is relative to the ground. The, velo the resultant of these two is the ground velocity. We mentioned this a little bit earlier when we were talking about velocity and um, ground speed. 
So we have a plane headed due north. So make sure you read the directions very carefully with an airspeed of 400 kilometers per hour when it is blown off course by wind of 100 kilometers per hour from the northeast. So this is the tricky part here. Since the wind is from the northeast, that means it's blowing southwest. Okay, blowing southwest. Determine the resultant ground velocity. Okay, so we have an airplane going north at 400 kilometers an hour. So I'm going to draw one like this. This is my 400 kilometers. And it's being blown off course. And I'm going to draw like a little north, south, east, west here. Ooh, there was a rolling pin went by. So we have a wind from the northeast. So it's blowing southwest. So it's blowing southwest means exactly a 45 degree angle as well, right? So it's blowing the plane this way. And the resultant is going to be this vector here. So you're blowing the plane just like the wind is blowing down this way and it's pushing this vector. And so here's my resultant here. And what I need to do now is figure out um, some values. We've got to put some other values on here. We didn't put the wind. The wind was 100, 100 kilometers per hour. So that's my wind speed. The resultant here is going to be the ground velocity. So VG, velocity ground, velocity airspeed, velocity wind speed. Okay, so I need to um, figure out the resultant. And the resultant I can do because I know that this angle in here is 45 degrees. That's the other. So northeast, this means 45 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to write out my equation. <clears throat> so I have the resultant, the magnitude of the resultant squared is going to be, now I'm just using cosine law, so 100 squared plus 400 squared minus 2 times 100 times 400. Oh, I'm sure you know this cosine law very well by now. Cos of 45 degrees, and that's going to come out to about 336.8 kilometers per hour. Okay, so I have my resultant, but I also need to know the direction, the ground velocity. I didn't write that on here, but I need the direction as well. So the direction, I'm going to use the sine law to find the angle here. Okay, so this little angle in here, theta. Okay, so the sine of 45 degrees over the resultant, which was 336.8. So this over this is 100 over this one. Or, I'm sorry, I've got the sine on the top. So I have sine theta. Of course, sine law you can do upside down as well, right? Same thing. Okay, so that means that sine theta here, sine theta equals 100 times sine 45 degrees over 336.8 and theta comes out to approximately 12.12 degrees. Okay, so that means the plane, um, the resultant velocity ground velocity, therefore ground velocity is approximately 336.8 kilometers per hour and I need a direction so it's going to be north 12.2 degrees west 12.12 so north 12.12 degrees west Okay, so make your little diagrams and think about what the resultant is. In this case, the resultant is where the plane ends up going in this example, right? The resultant is where the plane ends up going. So let's talk about another question that's another airplane, another airplane question that's a little bit different in that it has um, 
A small airplane has an airspeed of 244 kilometers per hour. The pilot wishes to fly to a destination that is 480 kilometers due west from the plane's present location. So in this case, we want to go due west. What isn't important in question A here, what's not important is this distance, 480 kilometers. It is not velocity, so it has nothing to do with the vectors. It has everything to do with how long will it take, right? I need to find the resultant velocity of the plane first. So if I drew my plane, the plane wants to go due west. So let's draw a little airplane here. Uh, maybe it looks like a fish, but something like that. Here's my airplane. It's flying along. It wants to go here. This is the resultant. And this is the part that um, you have to keep reminding yourself of. Where you want to go is your resultant. Or where you end up going is a resultant. So in order for this plane to go exactly due west, it's going to have to fly this way first, like this, because there's a wind that's blowing it this way, right? The wind is from the south. So this is my 44 kilometers per hour wind. So um, the wind velocity and my plane has an airspeed here. So it's going this way at 244 kilometers per hour. So think about, you know, this going this way, the wind is pushing up this way and I want to go this way. So this is my resultant speed. Don't even worry about this 480 yet. We'll get to that in part B. So what direction should the plane fly? Well, I'm only trying to find this angle here, right? It's going to have to fly. This is north, and this is south, and that's west because it was going due west. It wants to go west, but it can't fly straight west because if it did, it would end up somewhere up here, right? So it has to fly south of west in order to, or south of, yeah, south of west to end up here to go exactly due west. Okay, so what is theta here? Well, this is an easy one because it's just sine of theta. Sine theta is 44 over 244. And theta comes out to approximately 10.4 degrees. So I know the plane should fly west 10.4 degrees south for fly west 10.4 degrees south or you could say south and then you know what 89.6 degrees west it's easier to write it this way though because I want to go I want to go west <coughs> okay so I've got that part and I need to know um, part B says how long will it take so that's distance divided by speed is going to give me time right so for this one I want distance divided by speed to give me time so I need to know the resultant here I need to know the resultant velocity so this is because it's due you know coming straight from the the south and west that means this is a 90 degree angle which means I basically just have a Pythagorean theorem to work with so that means the resultant or the ground velocity is going to be the square root of 244 squared that's my hypotenuse so I have to subtract 44 squared and that's going to come out to about 240 kilometers per hour it might even be exactly I'm not sure you have to do it on your calculator it might be exactly 240 kilometers per hour and then how long will it take well that's easy now that I know my distance time is going to be 480 divided by 240 and that's going to give me two hours okay so um, I think the takeaway from this lesson is to make sure you know what the resultant is because it can be something different 
for an airplane, right? It could be where you want to go as opposed to where the wind is taking you, which would be your resultant, like it was in, in this other question that we just did here. So we were going this way, but we got blown off course, and this is our resultant. Whereas in this one, we wanted the resultant to be straight or due west of our present location. Okay, so hope that helps you. And again, if you have any other questions from um, the Nelson textbook, because I don't have access to the um, McGraw-Hill, but if you have any questions from there, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and have a great day.